I saw this space. There was a show here uh, two years ago called Steampunk, and it was one of the greatest shows I've seen. That's when I got my idea, and I said I should, I could do my my thing in this space. So that's when I went home and I sat down and I told my wife, it's going to be 40 years, and I think we should think about this. And I wrote a note to. Amy and Tom, and I said, please come to my studio. Um, this is on Michael Paraskevis. I explained to them I was an you know, animator. I've done work on television, but I've got 40 years worth of work. And I said, would you please come to my studio? I don't know how else to explain this. You really have to come to the studio to see it. I said, look, I want to show, you know, 40 years. And the kicker was I wanted to make the big ferocious beast. I wanted to inflate the ferocious beast and make a big giant sculpture out of it. This is my show, it's called Paint Your World. I wanted to call the show All My Stuff, but that seemed a little glib. I've been out in the Hamptons for 40 years. I came out here in 79 and I never left. It's an early uh, self-portrait from school. Uh, this is a wall of where I've ended up in this business. I've ended up do doing animation, uh, children's books, and TV design. This is the big wall of my life. This is one of our, my favorite uh, books was the Junior Crawl that my mother wrote. And there's the Ferocious Beast, there's a television show. This is the Green Monkeys. The Green Monkeys is a comic strip that runs in dance papers. It's been running amazingly. Somebody asked me how long Green Monkeys has been running. And Green Monkeys has been running for 20 years. This is a comic strip that I do with my wife now. This is called Lily and Derek. It's about the, these two dogs. This is Priscilla, named after my wonderful mother-in-law, who I love very much. She's a great lady. And uh, she's a, this is a cow. It's about a cow who is bored with eating, and she doesn't want to eat anymore. She doesn't want to sit and eat grass and watch the traffic that goes by and moo. She decides to, uh, she looks around the barn one day, and she discovers uh, buckets of paint, and she dips her tail in this bucket of paint, and she paints the side of the barn. We did this uh, especially for the museum. See, here's, um, here's Priscilla, here she's painting the, the side of the barn, and then they are looking up at the barn, and this is actually my father-in-law. Arthur Bruno. And this is, uh, this is the barn she paints. See? So they come from all over and she paints with the kids in town and then they give her, a, uh, they give her an exhibit of paintings at the, at the uh, Southampton Arts Center. Before we had the idea of doing a retrospective show, I was thinking about coming to this museum and just doing something called sketchbooks and just doing a sketchbook show. Well, Amy said, it was really Amy's idea, who said, why don't you just film the sketchbooks and you just film yourself turning through them and we can just, just take a bunch of them and we shot about an hour's worth of film. And so they ran it on a big monitor and it kind of runs in a loop during the show. I've done a lot of workshop posters over the years, starting with the Hampton Classic in 1987. I've uh, done four of them. They were, I pat myself on the back because they were all very successful. And then I did some posters down in Florida. This is the wall of where I really made a living uh, in the, my early days. I did a lot of magazine work back when there were things called magazines. Town and Country, I did Time Magazine, I had New York Magazine, used my work a lot. And then in the middle of all of that, I did dance papers. I, uh, I worked at Dan since 1988. My deal with the paper was I got to run a full page cartoon. And this was the first cart one of the first cartoons I ran in the paper that I told my, my mother wrote this cartoon. She was very creative. She wrote songs, she wrote music, she did a lot of things in her life but she, uh, she never got published, and I got her to write me a book, and then she also wrote Junior Crow for the paper, and that ended up, that really was the lead into all the TV, uh, the TV animation work we did. A lot of it goes back to Junior. This is a particular favorite. This is one of the only times Dan's put a photograph on the cover, and I had to convince them and beg them that this should be their Christmas cover. This was a puppet show we did for uh, Plum TV out here. We had it on BVH, and hopefully we'll be doing a new Brand new Christmas special in 2020. We created Maggie and the Ferocious Beast for Nickelodeon. This is our big, this is one of the biggest show we ever did. Millions and millions of people all over the world have seen this show. I get letters all the time about it. And so we decided to make a big, giant, inflatable, ferocious beast to celebrate 
uh, this uh, 40 year show. We were so worried about this thing that we got, a, you know, we got a cat. We, in the middle of all this show, we got a cat. So this deflated was folded up in a, in a towel, was wrapped in a towel, and it was in one of the bedrooms on the bed. We put it on the guest bedroom bed, and we had to buy an air conditioner for the room. So we had to keep, we wanted to keep it temperature controlled because we bought the beast in the spring, and because we needed to blow it up and test it to see if it actually looked right and worked properly. All summer long, I kept thinking that cat was going to get into the room and he was going to scratch that thing to shreds. He never did. Uh, my wife begged me for months. She said, make an alternate, make a, make, a, make a backup beast. There's only one right now. This is my a tribute to my wonderful mother who passed away. She was really something. Uh, we did 23 books together. We did three TV shows. Uh, we did a Christmas special for ABC. That's the, uh, one of the original test paintings for Junior Kroll. That's what the book was supposed to look like, but it didn't end up not looking like that. This is how the book ended up. We went from you know, the Dance Papers cartoons to, to a more finished version of this. And then my mother would write uh, a story poem that was all about different aspects of Junior's life. This was from the Christmas book. He was making the Three Kings, and already was the star of David. This is from Marvin the Tap Dancing Horse. This was a book my mother wrote and we, we ended up developing as a TV series for PBS. But all about a carnival horse who, he always wanted to dance on the Broadway, in a Broadway show. And he ends up getting a big job on Broadway, comes a big and famous store, and he looks at his agent and he says, I want to go home. When I got out of school, I could have just done beach paintings. I think I could have painted beach balls for the rest of my life, and I just, I just couldn't do it. I had so many different ideas and so many different ways of painting that I liked. But this was a book we did. We did a lot of children's books like this. This was uh, Taffy Saltwater. Uh, this was a book that my mother and I uh, worked on for a few years. We, she, we didn't get it published until after she died, and I, had re I rewrote it. I have to say this was really mostly my mother's idea. This was about a little girl named Taffy who goes to the beach and builds a big sandcastle. And my mother's love of Ocean Grove and Asbury Park, I think, was the, the reason I really, really wanted to do this book. So this is from, uh, this is from Monster Beach. This is another book my mother wrote uh, about, uh, about this uh, sea monster. And you can see the segue. This is like an early painting. This is a later painting. And I kept my motif of the polka dot, at the, the yellow with the red polka dots for some reason. And we've moved that into the big ferocious beast here. It's like a polka dot theme. I could paint these pictures today, I could still do this, but it just becomes kind of repetitive and I kind of was moved on and did other things. These are the original Maggie uh, drawings from uh, the original Maggie books that we did. This is the big carrot. These are sketches that we did for the early versions of characters from the show. This is the cat we had in, you can see the dates on 1994. This was all development art for uh, the Ferocious Beast show at, at Nickelodeon and Nick Jr. This is the big map from uh, the Maggie and the Ferocious Beast series. Maggie uh, is a little girl, and she's a spunky little kid, and she draws this map, and this map becomes her world. And it, basically, it's, you know, it's my version of Winnie the Pooh. This is really, you know, this is the Hundred Acre Woods. This is Maggie's world, and this is where she lived and where she had her best friend, the Ferocious Beast, and Hamilton Hawks, who was a little pig. And this is all the places that she liked to go to over the time. At the museum here, this great place, we, we, we made this crazy cartoon TV set where you can watch the uh, Maggie cartoons uh, that are still running today. Somewhere in the world you can watch Maggie. This is a lot of personal work. This was, I was always painting these kind of monster heads. When I was sitting in Los Angeles one year, I did all these kind of like little kind of like canvases and I strung them all together. I kind of uh, got into these uh, masks. This was a kind of a, what's a subsection of my work that I would do. I did this painting years ago, it's called Moon Dance. And I saw this kind of Mexican mask that they, they, they wear on Day of the Dead. And they have all these kind of like great paper mache masks. So I started painting these kind of like crazy heads. And then I tried to make them out of metal. I did these, these are sheet metal, these are painted sheet metal. These are a big labor of love because I kept cutting my hands when I made them. I liked old shooting gallery targets. I did a series of these, this is one of them. that I actually took out in my yard and shot up until one of the BBs bounced back at me. 
and almost took my eye out, which is like that movie. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's a true story. This is from Cecil Bunyan's The Midnight Train. This was another book that my mother wrote. We got these little guys in here, the Shamlander heads. We called them Shamlanders. It was a book called Shamlanders, and it was a kind of live in the desert and kind of sneak around and play games. This was a a book that I had a great opportunity to do. For some reason, the art director who did this magazine was convinced that I could draw poetry, that it was a poetry book about Robert Frost's poems. I had just been to Iowa. I'll show you more of the Iowa paintings. I had been to Iowa. I loved it. It was great. We were doing research for a book. And I said I could paint that because I, I know how to do this. And the, the, it was a very dark book. If you've read Robert Frost, it's really dark. I said, are you sure this is for little kids? And I'm going, oh, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. So we did a Robert Frost, but this is the cover. This is a poem called November, and this was Fire and Ice. Uh, there's a whole series of them. I, I couldn't fit them all on the show. Uh, this is from Tangerine Bear, a book we did for Harper Collins. This is about a little teddy bear whose mouth is sewn on upside down. And it's a sad little bear, and all the other bears are smiling, and he struggles to get sold, and in a junk, he ends up in a junk store on a crummy part of the neighborhood, and he ends up being friends with all the little characters in the window. And he's always struggling to get sold, and his dream is to go to find a home someday, when in the end of the book he realizes he is home, and at the end of the book, he's, he's, the window that he's in with the, with the jack-in-the-box and the bird, is that's his family. This is my labor of love. This, this is my sister-in-law's Westie. This is my mother-in-law's German Shepherd, and this is my friend's cat. And we developed, my wife and I developed this series of this daily comic strip, which is a grind to do. So we've taken a little breather on it, but we're gonna get back into it. I like this one too. So she says, I'm writing a cookbook. She's typing away and then Derek just laughs and he just keeps laughing because she can't cook at all. And she says, Santa sent me this, an early gift. It's a lump of coal. And she says, I know what this is for. If I sit here long enough, I'll get that diamond I always wanted. This is one of my favorite walls, is this wall. I've always, this when we first did the show, I said, I want to do this wall. And it was just tack stuff up from the studio. I could have put hundreds of more things up on this wall. But this is a lot of stuff. This is a lot of original stuff from Maggie Nefrocious. This is the original Maggie Nefrocious drawing. This is the way he used to look. He started, he's obviously, he's been adapted and changed. This is how we kind of ended up looking like this. There's a lot of unpublished stuff here. There's a lot of, you know, once you get into animation and TV, you start finding, you know, you, do a, you pitch a lot of shows that don't get sold. You know, so you end up with a lot of artwork. But we did a show called Space Diner. It didn't sell. We did a show called Fashion Pets. That didn't sell either. Uh, we did a great show called The Triplets, uh, which we're kind of still working on. And then this is really where I earned my bread and butter over the years. This is a lot of magazine work. This is my Time cover. That's my father on Time magazine. He, uh, he had a sign-up uh, release. It was a story about alcoholism. And his brother called him up and he, sh he said, Paul, I didn't know you were an alcoholic. And he said, I'm not an alcoholic. I was just a model. It's a model for the cover of the magazine. These are just jobs I've done. You know, I have a way of painting a very pretty picture. It's a very pretty picture. It was a book cover for a, a mystery novel. This is my, one of my favorite things that I did. I did this back in 85. This was a series of paintings that I did about a nightclub out here. It was a nightclub in the city. It was called Danceteria. Uh, they came out here for a summer and they opened up shop in Watermill. And what we did with this series is we tried to, over the years, I've been pitching this as an animated series for Late Night, and we were going to do a show called Danceteria 1983, uh, but we're still working on it. Oh, this is nice. This is neat. This was a sketchbook that I walked around in 1980. What is this? I can't even remember the year. 1987? 1986. This is 1986, and I walked around town one winter and did uh, drawings of uh, Southampton. There's Ralph the Barber over here. There's Ralph. There's Ralph. And my love of toy boats who shows up in those paintings. Now, my mother-in-law always gets onto the cover of Dan's papers at Christmas time. I think we're into our fifth year. Uh, already passed away 
uh, but uh, Priscilla's still with us. Kind of do like a Christmas tribute to the Bruno family and, you know, and what Christmas is, is to our family. So we try to pick a different Christmas uh, story to tell. Uh, this, this was this last year, this was there, this was Artie's car, and, uh, and that was his dog. This was a dance cover. This was the 2008 recession cover, and they fought me tooth and nail on this, right? So I finally got them to run it the week before Christmas. But listen, if you were around in 2008, if you remember what the stock market was doing in the recession, and everything was just horrible. Uh, it's, people have short-term memories, but the, that was pretty, I thought that was funny, because they're burning the money, and they're having to uh, keep themselves warm. I could have filled 15 of these cases with like trivia from my life, just little sketchbooks and toys that we made over the years and neckties. This is the original Ferocious Beast. It's dated 1993. I tried to make a model of it to see what it would look like in 3D. I was not a very good sculptor. These are various sketchbooks. There's uh, Bob Weir from The Dead. And this is Verdell Lamphere from Iowa. That W.C. Fields drawing I did when I was probably 11 years old. Uh, neckties, there's a very, very early version of the Green Monkeys. That's a sketchbook I did from my Los Angeles days. There's Billy Joel sitting at the piano drinking a cup of coffee. I think it's a cup of coffee. And there's the um, City Field sketchbook. See, I did, actually I cheated on the sketchbook because I didn't want to draw all the ads, so I just took a photograph and Xeroxed it and pasted them in. I, I know that's cheating, but it, it kind of worked on the drawing. Back here in this vast museum, this is a big museum, um, and I really, I, there was n no other place on the east end of Long Island I could have thought to, to where to put this show or how to mount it, but this was, when I knew about this space, I, this was a great area. And this room is terrific for showing paintings. This is all large format paintings. This is not illustration work, this is just stuff that I paint. This was a series of paintings I did about entertainment acts on the stage. I've been doing these for a number of years. It was originally called, the first painting in the set really was called Eddie Largo and his Trained Bear. And I really liked writing. I, I felt compelled to, to actually just write, the, write what the act was on the canvas. So there was a whole series of these. I'll take a side trip to Iowa. Uh, my wife and I, we were, we were always working on books and I worked so long with my mom that after she passed, I liked working with somebody else and my wife, Maria, who's really funny. She's got a very good sense of humor, and I always credit her with all the funny episodes of Green Monkeys lately, because she is very clever. So, I, I, sometimes I lack a punchline. But anyway, we're working on a book about Iowa, we're working on a book about a farm. We wanted to go to, the, to a place that we, we didn't know, and we ended up in Iowa on a bed and breakfast at, at Linda's uh, farm. I just fell in love with Iowa. There's nothing there. I, I can't explain it other than that. There is nothing in Iowa. Sometimes it feels like I, that I make fun of Iowa. I don't make fun of Iowa. I like it there. It's beautiful. The sky was a constant dance of shape and color and clouds and changing, changing landscape. The, the, the landscape is so incredibly flat, but you end up with these, these sunsets and skies and, and they just, they're gorgeous. And you end up with these lonely roads, these gravel roads that go on for miles after mile. This barn, uh, I've painted this barn countless times, is in Lamont. The barn is abandoned, but it's, it was just sitting there and they, I guess they're piecing out the, the wood. And I was very sad, almost to the point of trying to call the guy up and convincing him not to sell it and I'll buy it. <laughs> I just wanted, I didn't want to take it down. It's a beautiful barn. I try to be serious, I'm not that serious. There was a whole series of these kind of landscapes I did and then I started sticking things on them. I said, well, it needs a cat. So uh, this is a painting of my cat. Uh, this is an early painting from Los Angeles. This is the view out my hotel window. And again, they, people said, why is this woman you know, flying? And I said, it seemed like the right thing to do. These are older works over here. This was, uh, this is again, the same kind of thing about a you know, stage act that was my agent, A Bad Day in the Life of the Fireproof Woman and the Stand Up Devil. Uh, I liked stage work because my mother, always took me to theater when I was a kid. I saw a lot of stage stuff when I was growing up and I think it comes back into my work that every, I think of a painting as a, as a presentation of something, as a presentation of some kind of form of entertainment going on and something's going on, you have to try to figure it out, but I do like that stage, I do like a stage setting. Uh, this is Earl the Floating Man, goes back to that series of early work. This is the newer work. 
uh, I've removed the actual con I've removed that kind of way of like stripping in the title of the show. I just let it let it be by itself. Uh, but the title of this painting was called The Magic Trick. So a friend of mine said, why don't you paint Mickey Mouse? Since I like Disney so much, I said, sure, that's a good idea. So I stuck big Mickey Mouse in the heartland of America with this little tiny cat who's contemplating this big mouse. You never really have a favorite painting, but if I had to pick a favorite painting in the show, I think it's this one. And my wife would say that it's this one because my wife gave me this idea and said, you know, you should do this thing about divers and falling in love with the sea. She, they, she even had the title. She gave me the title first. She said, do a painting called Falling in Love with the Sea. And this was what we came up with. And there's Donald. We, I had to do Mickey. I did Mickey. I had to do Donald. So that was another one. And this was sort of an offshoot of the Falling in Love with the Sea, back to the toy boats again. My wife and I were trying to figure out the aspects of the show. And we said, let's have, my idea was to have these characters, uh, these masks, and we were going to make masks for actors to walk around the opening, which became a big logistical problem. And then my wife, when I were in Macy's one day, and she goes, Mickey, she says, you know what you should do with those masks? She says, you should just put them on mannequins. And I said, okay, we'll paint the mannequins. This is the, is this the Vegas one? Yeah, this is the Las Vegas cat, Lucky Cat. They all have names. And this is the Hollywood Hills. And this is my lawyer over here. This is my stockbroker. And it was, it was kind of a learning experience. It was fun to kind of figure out how to work in plaster and paper mache. These are old paintings. Let's go here. Yeah, this is really old. These are, this is probably 85, uh, 86. I did a whole series of train paintings. I thought these pictures were funny. I, some people thought they, I thought I was crazy. Some people thought I was just too, you know, they thought I was dark and deep. And I'm not that deep. So this is the puppet show that my mother and I uh, took to HBO. They were complaining about the fact how expensive animation was. And the true story was in the middle of the meeting, I said, I can think up a show that can be very cheap to make and I'll bring it to you in a month. And I brought it to them in a month and I said, here's the cheap show. And they watched it and it was puppets and we did like a pilot test. And they looked at me and they said, how much is this show gonna cost? I said, well, it only cost me about, it didn't even cost me $2,000 to shoot the pilot. And they were just unconvinced that it could work. So we did it as a local puppet show. This is uh, Duncan Biscotti, he's the main guy. This is Maurice the Chef. This is Fat Lucy, this is Jigsy, Jigsy Riggs. Uh, this is uh, Biscuit the Dog. This is Baby. This was my mom. This, my mom did the voice of this puppet. Although she didn't, she didn't do the hand, you know, she, she was not good at doing the hand. But she did do the voice of the puppet, so we taped her voice. Uh, this is Uncle Carl, he was a nice puppet. He was like the old German man. And this was uh, Pico. But Duncan was the main guy, he was the main guy. I'm proud of the show. And thanks to Tom Dunn and uh, Amy Kerwin to really uh, give me the chance to do this. And here he is, this is the big beast. So that's my show. That's 40 years. So now I gotta think about what I'm gonna do for the next 40 years. Mm -hmm.